Saturday evening, August 6th, is Erev Tisha B'Av. Erev Tisha B'Av. Saturday evening, August 6th. Uh, I, I think I indicated to you last week, I am going to be signing on. Uh, I already saw the, the agenda, and it looks really good. Uh, Hadar, H-A-D-A-R, uh, is a major study institute based in New York. Uh, and they're going to have lectures all day long uh, 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 during Tisha B'Av day on the Sunday. Uh, it'll have the chanting of Eicha, of Lamentations, and, and various lecturers doing various things connected to uh, the observance. So that's certainly something that I can recommend for Sunday, August 7th. Oh, I thought you said 6th, uh, August 7th. But... Seventh is the Sunday. The, the, the lectures are only, the agenda is only to that. Um, I want to do a little bit of checking in. We've already had uh, checking in uh, and uh, to wish a hachlama uh, shleima to Tamara, uh, who has, you know, underwent uh, outpatient surgery and you're looking terrific. So... Oh. Okay, and I, I hope I hope that's how you really feel. That's great. Okay, a speedy healing tomorrow. Um, any other things going on in your lives that you would like to share with us? Anything else? Uh, anything else at all? Uh, we're waiting here in Santa Monica for an announcement as to whether the uh, mask mandate will be restored uh, 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 July 29th, something like that. I don't know, something like that. Uh, and and Brad, what's going on in, in Denver? Yeah, you're on. Uh, here in California for a wedding. Ah, so what's going on here in California? <laughs> oh, okay, I know that, all right. Good, a simcha, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Uh, okay, here is a test question. Uh, points will be given to the people who raise their hands and possess the correct answer. The period between um, the 17th of Tammuz and the 9th of Av has a special name. Tisha B'Av is the end of that period. The 17th of the preceding month is the beginning of the period. What is, and we're in this period right now. What is this period called? Five, four, three. Oh, Howard. Howard, are you doing Google? <laughs> no, you are. Are you cheating? <laughs> I think it's the Tisha, it's the counting of the Omer. No, 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 no. Counting of the Omer ended with Shavuot. Uh, we're we're done with Omer. Uh, anyone else? Okay. This is a period called Bain Hamitzarim. Bain Hamitzarim. That's this period, and it translates as. Between the Straits, S-T-R-A-I-T-S, -S, Between the Straits, the terrible historic period initiated by the 17th of Tammuz in terms of leading to the destruction of the temple, and then that three-week period ending with Tisha B'Av, the ninth of Av, a three-week period. We are in that period right now. If you will, uh, July 16th to August 6th, uh, Bain Hamitzarim. Now, Brad, I am not, this was written before you said you're here for a wedding. Okay. Uh, during this period, Bain Hamitzarim, no haircuts. Really? No, no shaving. No music. Wow. No weddings. I, 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 Brad, understand. I, that, it, I'm just it's reading off the sheet here. Um, 
Not a Jewish wedding, Rabbi. <laughs> great. great. Okay, well, that's fine. Uh, don't do the horror at the wedding. And if they say, why aren't you, say it's Bain Hamitzarim. That'll, <laughs> that'll, that'll help you us. Mean, you mean there's no dancing either? No dancing, really, and, and no, no music. Uh, it is a, a semi-grieving period. Mm. Okay. Is it Shiva for the temple destruction? Yes, it connects with the temple destruction. Uh, it begins with the uh, entry of the Romans into the city, and then eventually Tisha B'Av, the destruction uh, of the temple itself. Uh, the rabbis want to make this, uh, I'll get to you in a second. The rabbis want to make this a, a bigger deal. And so they say uh, this was actually the period, uh, and maybe Tisha B'Av was the exact date, when Moses broke the first set of tablets coming down from Mount Sinai. So the smashing of the tablets connects maybe with Tisha B'Av that way. The two temples, <laughs> the expulsion from Spain is approximately that. Uh, Steve, Steve Miller, this is specifically for you and other attorneys. Uh, do not begin court cases during Bain Hamitzarim, during this period. As if we have a choice when the judge tells you to be there. <laughs> that is a typical reform excuse backing away from Jewish tradition, but fine. Well, um, yeah, I think you lose your license for abandoning your client the first day of trial. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, so it goes. Um, and for the rest of you, uh, do not take flights during this period. Mm. It is a bad luck period. I'm, I'm, I get this stuff. I don't know where I get it from. Uh, don't have any avoidable surgery. Okay? So, I mean, I look, you and I, we have a close relationship and I will tell you, I had a haircut yesterday. <gasps> uh, yeah, yeah. Which okay. one? Wow. That was yesterday. Is yesterday okay? I have bad hearing, Steve Miller, and I heard that. Okay? I think there is something else about not saying snarky things during Bain Hamid Sarim. Um, yes, all four of the hairs were cut. It took 20 minutes, very careful surgery. Um, okay, so did you, you had a question, you had your hand up? My father told me, and I can't remember whether he said, don't enter a real estate deal on Tuesdays or don't close a real estate deal on Tuesdays. Maybe this is part of the same Mishigas, but it, but it, was, it was Tuesdays. This is not Mr. Goss. This is Jewish tradition. If I hear any others of you having, you know, whatever, uh, the starting a business during this period or going to court, I will find a way to report you. This is not Mr. Goss. Secondly, it is because of creation that makes Tuesday a special day. Ah, okay. <laughs> Today it has to do with Vahier, Vahi Boker, you know, Vayam Adonai, the Tovo. This is this is very good. So it's it's Tuesday is a special day because of the creation description, not because of Tisha B'av. Uh, but I, it is it is there. Uh, okay. Last last question. You're doing beautifully. No one's had any right answers so far. Um, the, Saturday, <laughs> the Saturday before Tisha B'Av has a special Haftarah, and therefore the um, therefore it has a special name. The Shabbat before Tisha B'Av. Uh, uses as the Haftarah, the first chapter of Isaiah, 
Uh, and anyone want to know, tell me what the name of that special Shabbat before Tisha B'Av is. Five, four, three, two. No, tomorrow I'm not going to call on you. Uh, <laughs> the Haftarah is Shabbat Chazon. Uh, the, the, the is Chazon Yeshayahu. It's Isaiah chapter one, the vision of Isaiah. And it's filled with recriminations and challenges and criticisms. Um, and then the uh, Shabbat afterwards. All right, tomorrow. What's the Shabbat afterwards? Shabbat Nachamu. Nachamu. Uh, because there we read also Isaiah 40. Uh, Nachamu, Nachamu, Ami, which is always mistranslated. Uh, Nachamu, Nachamu, Ami, in the context of Isaiah, means God says to Isaiah, go out and comfort. Nachamu, Nachamu, really comfort my people after the hard things. Um, and people read this, and I've heard rabbis deliver wonderfully inappropriate sermons, uh, as if the Sedra, the Sedra begins, be comforted, my people. Be comforted, my people. No, that's not what it says. It says, Isaiah, you go and comfort my people. Okay. Uh, uh yeah, I think you have some disagreement from some disagreement. No, yes. it's not Isaiah, it's prophets, anonymous prophets. It's in the book of Isaiah, but the commissioning is to a whole number of unnamed prophets. And that's why it's in plural. Okay, I was going to say that, but I wanted to check and see if anyone's paying attention. It, it is a group of unnamed prophets, uh, and, uh, and I am now going to disconnect from the Zoom. Okay. Um, <laughs> we're going to go ahead now before Effie, you know, argues with me. We're going to go to Numbers 2711, 1080 in the plout. 1080, I even have it here. And in the WRJ uh, commentary, 974. Uh, again, again, please. Yes, yes. 1080. In the plout? Yeah, and I have the, in the, the living plout, Torah. And the 974 in the uh, women's Torah commentary, the W. I have the living Torah. Can you just give the numbers again? What yes. number? Numbers 2711. Seven. Thank numbers, you very much. What, yep, yep, yep. Numbers 2711. Yeah. Okay. In Deuteronomy chapter 31, Moses dies. The book of Deuteronomy in many ways is like an opera. You know, she gets wounded and takes an hour to die, right? Uh, it just goes on and goes on and goes, I'm dying, I'm this and that, fine. Moses is, what to the book of Deuteronomy is the last day of Moses's life. What we have here in uh, Numbers 2711 is God telling Moses, go up on this mountain, you are going to die. Uh, Pat Margolis just joined us and I see Pat and I'm just waving hello. Okay, uh, so the period of time that it takes for Moses to die is from Numbers 27, uh, 11, 12, and then all the way to Deuteronomy 31. So what goes on here, and the reason I mention it, is that the rabbis love to create stories about how Moses really didn't want to die. And, and there are Midrashim all over the place. Moses does everything, and I want to say under the sun, but no, not enough, because according to rabbis in the Midrash, Moses goes up to heaven, Moses speaks with the angels, Moses does all kinds of stuff to get God's decree changed. Moses does not 
go quietly. So, if you were pleading Moses' case, despite being Bain Hametzarim, what arguments would you bring before God? Don't take my life now. What arguments would you bring before God? More oh, work to do. Pardon? More work to do. More work to do. Is that Kathy? Yes, hi. Hi, I I see your head. It's a lovely head, but that's all I see. I, I don't get a picture. I don't know how to do this. Oh, you have a picture. Yeah. This is the first time the first time that I've been able to uh, come on. The, I've been doing the class for about a year or whatever, and I never came on as a participant. This, Ladies uh, and gentlemen. I couldn't get in. Welcome to Kathy. This is where you are. Okay. Well, there Thank you, you are. And yes, how do I get a picture here? I'm <laughs> we see yeah, you. Three, yeah, a screenshot. Uh, Moses will say, "I still have work to do." What, okay, what else would Moses say, folks? What else would Moses? You're pleading his case before God and and the angels. Effie, why can't I go into the land that I've been working so hard <clears throat> the last forty years and see? Right, the, it's, it's a question of fairness. It's a question of fairness, right? I work 40 years and you you take away the pleasure of the final achievement. Yes. Any other arguments or things that you put uh, before God? Okay, I see Rebecca. Uh, who's going to succeed me? Who's taking ah. my... Yes, yes. Who's going to succeed me? You know, God, I, I have a, you know, certain favor in your eyes. And I've been guiding this people for 40 years. You know, what punk kid are you going to bring in to, to replace me? Okay, yes. And Cindy? To help my people with the transition. Oh, it'll be easier, God, if I lead them in and help them adjust. I like that. I think that would be persuasive. Okay, I have a sneak one. Uh, I didn't invent it, the rabbis did, but when I read it, I laughed out loud. And since I was doing this preparation at 1.30 in the morning, laughing out loud created certain suspicion. But here's what it goes. Moses, being clever, says to God, remember they're right on the other side of the Jordan River, God you said that I can't enter the land. But God, the tribe of Ruvain and God received territory from you on the side of the Jordan where I am now. So God, I'm already in the land. So what's your hurry? When I read this, I laughed out loud. Because it's true. The land where Moses will eventually, at the end of Deuteronomy 31, die, is in the part of the area assigned to two of the tribes, a Reuven, God, Chatzimana, you know, whatever, the two of the tribes. So if I'm already in land promised to the tribes, God, your promise is null and void. I'm all set to go in. I see. But he's not really in the land because, as I recall, although their land was on the other side of the river, they were obligated to go fight while the real land was captured and were only able to return to the land allotted to their tribes after they were successful. Okay, for that very good comment, I forgive you the comment you made about my haircut. Now, uh, <laughs> the, the, um, you're right, but I have to come back and say, so were the rabbis. This is still part of the promised land. It, it is, because two of the tribes were assigned this land as their portion in the promised land. Let me, let me give you a rabbinic drash. 
This can be cared to, uh, compared to the case of a king who decreed against his son that he should not enter the door of his palace. The king entered the gate, the son went after him. The father didn't object. The father went further into the audience chamber. The son followed him. But as soon as he was about to enter the center of the house, the palace, he said to his kid, my son, from here on, you don't go. So the rabbis were saying, okay, yeah, we recognize the land of uh, Ruvain and God as part of the land, but we also recognize that Steve Miller in the future will be right. It's not so much a part of the land as the stuff on the other side. But you can come this far, Moses, and you can't go any further. Now, while I was preparing last night, I took recourse to one of my absolutely most favorite books ever. Uh, and if you want to, hi, Herman, I'm glad you made it over. Sorry, it's been a, a crazy morning, but welcome. Uh, Every rabbi in the world ought to have, and you, yeah, I have it in Hebrew over there, but I didn't want to show off. So uh, here, and it is the best collection of Midrashic stories that exists. It was put together, assembled by Chaim Nachman Bialik uh, and another Ramnitsky, and it is organized magnificently so I turned in here out of curiosity to a section which is called, this is an interesting thing. Um, it's called the death of Moses. I figured that would give me something to share with you today. And I found something uh, on page 101. Oh, I really am here. I wanted to read to you because I thought it was beautiful. It, it won't change anything. It's just a rabbinic touch on how they viewed the coming death of Moses. And God said to Moses, behold, the days approach that you must die. This is a quote from the Deuteronomy section. To what does this refer? It refers to a person who is nearing the day of their death. This is the verse. Even if a man should make himself wings like a bird and go up to heaven, once his time comes to die, his wings will be broken and he will fall to earth. That's all. It's the image. No matter how you aggrandize yourself, no matter how big, you know, you're going to be flying up toward the sun, stories and other cultural traditions. But at a certain point, no matter who you are, I don't want to wish a Kanahara to, to um, the owner and developer of SpaceX, but the image would be if Elon Musk gets in that spaceship and flies it even up to Mars, when the time comes even for the richest man on Earth to depart, There'll be an electron electronic malfunction. <laughs> and that will be his time to die. Oh boy. No matter how great you are, no matter how <laughs> high you fly, your time comes. Your wings will break off and you will crash to earth. I mm. it it I liked it. I, I not only do I agree with the 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 image, but I just think it's beautiful. The Sefer Agada goes on and says, 
Moses wouldn't give up. He approached the angels. Moses went up to heaven and went to an angel convention and pleaded his case. And God, to put this into contemporary terms, issued an executive order to the angels. Don't pay any attention to Moses. <coughs> and so it went. And so it went. Let's, let's read this. And, and the stories about the death of Moses fill the Midrash and a lot of rabbinic teaching. Verse 12 on page 1080. The Eternal One, Adonai, said to Moses, Ascend these heights of uh, Avarim, Avarim, and view the land that I have given to the Israelite people. When you have seen it, you too shall be gathered to your kin, just as your brother Aaron was. Help me take this verse apart. What's being said here? What is Moses being told? What are we being told? He's going to die. Yes. But there's more. Rebecca. <clears throat> that it's going to be okay. Aaron did okay. You're going to be okay. Okay. I mean, yes. 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 Aaron died comfortably. You will die comfortably. It'll be okay. What else is being said here? Cindy. He can see the land, but not enter it. So what is that saying to us, Cindy? What's it saying to us? Yes, it was said to Moses, but what is it saying to us? Well, he'll be able to see that he accomplished the goal of getting to the promised land. He just can't do that next step as a punishment for striking the rock. Right. For losing faith. Yeah. And Howard? Howard? Is this a scripture that has to do with Martin Luther King's one of his great speeches? I've been to the mountain. Uh, okay, the idea is the same. It's not the same text, but absolutely the idea is the same. Effie. I think God wanted to show that it's getting to the end. It's working while you're alive to get to the end. And whatever you're trying to accomplish, that no matter how good it is, you don't necessarily have to be the earth at the very end, but it's important that you work all the time in your life. Yeah, 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 I see that. Um, I don't know what just happened here. Good, go away. Uh, oh, yes. I have my favorite spam caller every day at 9.30 in the morning, 20 to 10. Spam risk? It, it's the same location. Okay. Effie, yes. Thank you for that. Um, that doesn't mean you stop trying. And Effie, what about what should satisfy us so that we can die comfortably? Okay. I see Harvey. But, it's, but it's, it's, the work, it's the work that you do while you are alive that counts. I, they, this is good, good material, Sukasa. I'm just going to say that your legacy lives on through your heirs. And so while he may not physically go to the promised land, through his heirs, he will be there in, a, in, a, so, uh, in some sense. Thank you. Good. Uh, and and Harv. Does this suggest that there's an afterlife when it says you shall be gathered to your kin? Means your family and you will be together in the afterlife, perhaps? 
That's a That's very good question, and I'm going to answer it to the best of my ability. In ancient biblical times, burial was often in family caves, and people, people were put into the caves in, I can do this without moving my hands, but it's harder. There are niches, and the person is brought in, the deceased, put there. After a year, the bones are left, and the person is put in a receptacle near the bones of other members of the family. This was called, technically, uh, gathered to your kin. Uh, okay, Tamara, do you want to fix me on this? Okay, thank you. So, so the, the phrase gathered to your kin, Harv, is a technical phrase, not referring to afterlife, but it's you're going to end up being buried next to the mishpacha that's already there. And that's gathered to your kin. Great question. Thank you. Definition of great question, one that I can answer. Um, Moses is making these arguments. His cry shook the heaven. What about this comment? Because there's more here. You shall be gathered to your kin just as your brother Aaron was. Most, we've already had the comment that Aaron died comfortably. Yes, yes, Aaron died comfortably. And Moses, I promise you that. But there's more that the rabbis want to find here. What are they going to do with the phrasing, you shall be gathered your king just as your brother Aaron was? What are they going to do with this? Hi, Steve. Were they, during all of this wandering, were they carrying around the bodies or bones of everyone who died along the way so that they could be in some type of family crypt when they arrived at their ultimate destination? The answer is no to that. <clears throat> With one exception, Joseph. do you Joseph. remember? Joseph. Joseph. Joseph's bones. Joseph's bones were in fact carried. So uh, how could Moses then be with his ancestors, none of whom are going to be buried where he ultimately needs to be buried? And I think that is a great question to which I do not have an effective response. I can tell you what gathered to your kin means in the Torah. But it's clear. But Moses, you're saying, in fact, won't be gathered to his kin. He's going to die in an unmarked grave or hmm. be placed that he's going to die in a place no one knows. Uh, and you're right. I have no answer to that particular question. How hmm. does gather to your kin apply? to Moses in this situation. Uh, uh, I have to leave it. Tamara, do you have a piece of wisdom? That's a very good question. That's a very good question, Steve. And I am taking away your right to join our Zoom study. So, that's <laughs> Marina. I believe uh, the community grieved uh, when uh, Aaron died. Maybe that's what is meant uh, when it says, uh, just as your brother Aaron was, maybe that the community will grieve over Moses. You, you folks are doing great. Yes, yes, you're right. That's certainly part of it. Uh, and by the way, of course, Miriam being, <coughs> excuse me, the woman, uh, there was no indication that the people mourned. They, they mourned for Aaron and they mourned for Moses. Uh, I'm not going to go back to that prior conversation, but there's more. Why does Aaron die short of the Holy Land? 
Anyone remember the golden calf? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, my feeling is God probably has not exactly forgotten that. Okay? Uh, Aaron sinned. He also did gossiping against Moses. There were a variety of things. Uh, Aaron sinned. And Moses, you are going to die because you sinned. Okay? With the rock, with whatever else, you sin. So the rabbis will take this phrase, as your brother was, as your brother was. And by the way, Steve, you can ask the same question. Then obviously Aaron was not gathered to his people, though the text seems to indicate he was. I'm not going to go back, but it, the question still remains. Moses earned his death by sinning. Aaron earned his death by sinning. What does that say to us? Don't sin. Her Herman, did you say that? Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm waiting to get a little testimony that you've achieved that 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 status. Um, yeah, right. Yeah. Nobody is perfect. No, but we're all still alive. Rabbi, is this we're all a... gonna die? Well, wait. Not yet. Cindy Not says die time soon. <laughs> Cindy, <laughs> what? Shabbat shalom. We're all still alive. All of us here, so obviously none of us have sinned yet. We call that tempting the Malachim of us. Don't do that. We should only live to 120. Yeah. That's right. But That's what, what, about the two, what about the two-year-old that dies for no good reason? Ah, uh, I don't understand all that. Don't you, I mean, you die whether you sin or not. Yeah. The, the it, first Rabbi, point, the first point it, I want to make is that there is no one who lives and doesn't sin. And if death is a decision by God to terminate our lives, I put that in the subjunctive, if. If that's the case, then each one of us, for whatever reason, will deserve our deaths even if we have wings flying up to Mars, we will deserve our deaths. I have to be clear because rabbis do this a lot. We can leave a false impression. By the way, I didn't say hello to Didi. Hi, Didi. I don't see you, but I know you're there. Um, I personally do not see any direct connection between my impending death and God's will. That may be very upsetting to people, but I could not leave this conversation as if I were saying everyone sins so they die. It is a cause and effect run by God. I certainly will take a comment from you. What about the Unitana Toka? Yes. What about the Unitana Toka? Well, that suggests that God does have a direct connection to everyone's death for it whatever yes, it reason states, God has. It states clearly, who shall live, who shall die, who by fire, who by water, who by strangling, who by sword. All that good stuff. Who by overeating during COVID, whatever. Um, you know that the Intana Toka of you do this, was removed from the Union Prayer Book, from, from one of the earlier Reform Prayer Books. It was simply excised. It was excised because it was an impossible belief to hold on to. So why say it? Oh, I can think of lots of reasons to say it, even if you don't believe that part. 
That's where the later editors of later reform prayer books came. Yes, there are reasons. And I don't want to be banal, but one of the reasons is great music. <laughs> no, I mean, it's true. Beautiful settings. But there are other very good reasons. So it came back in, even though we are reading a text, we do not, we, the movement collectively, though individuals differ, do not ourselves believe. As now I'm going to go to Howard and then to Effie, we're going to have to wrap, unfortunately. Howard. Oh. This, this conversation, I think, may, leads me to believe, to, it emphasizes to me how good it is that our Torah is full of so many contradictions and full of so many things that one can't literally believe or expect to be true or that aren't logical. And also that even, I'll say something for Reform Judaism, that it, it involves talking about these things, even though we don't really, on some level, we certainly don't believe it, believe them literally, but yet it's of tremendous value. And you brought up music. Music is exactly in that category. You can't analyze music in terms of what's true and false, but it's very meaningful. And so is this, even though we, some of the things in the Torah, we actually strongly don't believe, yet it's very powerful to follow I, it. I thank you for your comment, Howard. I thank you. Good comment. Thank you for that. It's, it's, it's almost like a theological smorgasbord, <laughs> right? I could never eat this, but I certainly can eat this, right? And um, well, yeah. I don't know. Not exactly, but something like that. Okay. Effie? Oh, I only raised my hand to say I was agreeing with what you were saying. I, was, I didn't raise it to talk. Hmm. Oh, yeah. I hope I, I God, forgive me. No, I, you know, this is a Shechiona moment, but we're, we're going to let it go. Um, there is so much more that's interesting and good. Um, when we're approaching people who are dying, Cindy certainly has had a, uh, there was a sisterhood discussion about how to handle people who are dying. And you're supposed to say four things to them. I forget what they all are. I forgive it's you. It's from I, your daughter. I forgive you. I love you. Aww. Thank you for being a part of my life. I'm Thank sorry. You. I forgive you. And I love you. I love you. So that, that, that's really, yeah. That being said, I love you guys. I'm not going anywhere, but I love you all so much. So I was late. The, it's good to have you here. Uh, it's so wonderful to be here. Okay. Uh, Tofun, is, Tofun is asking, I would appreciate it. My God, what happened to your hand, Rabbi? Hold one second, please. Sorry. If oh, everyone God. could do a prayer for my youngest brother, TJ, who is a four-time cancer survivor, 15 years, oh, and they've God been having him. difficulty conceiving a child, and... Uh, Sure, Tofan, Tofan. Uh, we all will carry your brother in our hearts and pray that with all that he's going through, that there can be a blessing in their being able to create and to conceive a child. Please, please keep us informed as, as to how things, how things go. Uh, I guess the point I wanted to make was when, God forbid, but it will happen, you're dealing with someone who is dying. One of the things you can help them see is a future for the life that they've led, that they have done things, created things, family, friends. Like Moses could see into the promised land, even if he couldn't get there. You were, 
you have every right at this moment in your dying to look into your promised land and feel a sense of fulfillment. Your life had meaning. If there is something we can do with people, your life had meaning and help them hold on to that. I'll leave it with that. I, I, May I just say that my life has meaning because of my kids and grandkids and because of you and uh, Risa and, and Cindy and oh my gosh, I'm being so blessed and I'm so grateful for you, all of you. Thank so you great. so much. I now, I now am going to shift to uh, Radish. Uh, okay. I am right. adding, I am adding to the Kaddish list uh, my friend and teacher Rabbi Dove Marmer uh, whom thousands are mourning across the world uh, a great teacher a great human being and I miss him a lot those who have passed away during the past month, Geraldine Alden, Steve Alexander, Barbara Lynch Brownstein, Michael Cameras, Michael Gittleson, Rabbi Dov Marmer, Melina Migdal, Sidney Joseph Moskowitz, Walter Shamus, Lee Zlotnick, and the following the anniversaries of whose deaths have occurred during the past week. Nahana Adlin, Lita Alcove, Muriel April, David Astor, Marianne Barbanel, Samuel Bahar, Carol Berkowitz, Milton Berman, Betty Berman, Max Brandis, Howard Brown, Norman Cohn, Lillian Cook, Florence Kosky, Renee Danziger, Jeffrey Dworkin, Paula Eisenberg, Lorraine Eisenstadt, Rand Feinstein, Fortuna Feldman, Shirley Feldman, Jeanette Flansbaum, Barry Fried, Jonathan Fury, Harry Gable, Lillian Gottschalk, Edward Greer, Leonora Harris, uh, Andrea Limon Heft, Cyril Hirsch, Jerry Hodes, Beverly Cooper Howard, Ruth Jacobs, Ray Kaufman, Steve Kleinman, James Levine, Irene Ann Levin, Fernando Lozano Jr., Rabbi Edgar Magnin, Paul Mandel, Harris Mann, Mary Minor, Rose Minor, Elizabeth Meserve, Rose Meyer, Henry Miller, Arthur Moore, Ruth Needleman, Melvin Nussbacher, Michael Orn Ormiston, Jennifer Pachalski, Florence Perlov, Stephen Pitts, Ben Post, Evan Prell, Anita Rabinovich, Dennis Rainey, Louise Richards, Israel Rittberg, Dean Harrison Ralston, David Rosenberg, Robert Rosenthal, Edward Ross, Bernard Roth, Mikhail Rosenberg, John Sabat, Anain Zadegi, Reba Sardell, Walter Schloss, Muriel Schleichert, uh, Mark Schulman, Walter David Schwartz, Francis Seltzer, Hilda Shaw, Jaime Schur, Lester Sidney, uh, Genevieve Simmons, Muriel Solomon, Marjorie Cherry Ferrari, Spitaleri, Isaac Durbati, Joan Tucker, Vincent Verzi, Gabriel Weiss, Irene Grace White, Floretta White, Miriam Wolf, Alfred Wolf, also Rabbi Alfred Wolf, Samuel Zimmer. I apologize for those whose names I have mispronounced. If you have names you would add to our memories, please speak those names aloud now. Judy Goldetsky. Moshe Shopson, Selma Shopson, Joyce Shopson, Richard Jones, Alma Beatty Jones, Mamie Victoria Boye Prosser, Grandpa Warner, Grandpa Bauer, Grandpa Mayor, Grandpa Jones. We bear in mind as well the names of all those who died in defense of the United States, died in defense of the state of Israel, who died in senseless acts of terrorism. 
my God. All those <laughs> who have all those for whom there is no one to say Kaddish. We bear them all in our hearts as we join together to say Yitgadal. the Amen. O says Shalom bin Robab. Who yas? Aleinu al Kol Yisrael. Amen. May God, who makes peace in the high places, make peace in our hearts, make peace in our homes, make peace in the household of Israel. Make peace among all the families and nations of earth, and let us say, Amen. 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 Rabbi, can I ask you a question when you're done? Okay, first I want to be able to say Shabbat Shalom to all, and I love you. Have a great week. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom to all. I just know if you know a good lawyer that can uh, yeah, help me with someone uh, harassing me and it's anti Semitic, the threat in the temple, they're not doing anything about this guy. And he's in the building and he's, he's evil, but they're watching him. Donna, I, I yeah, didn't I need, hear the first yeah, a good, part. A good lawyer. Donna, I need I'm, a good lawyer. Donna, I didn't hear the first part. Okay. The man, Rabbi Leader, knows this. He threatened. He, they took him to jail. He threatened to attack the temple and blow up the Worship of our temple. He threatened to kill me and my kids. He's crazy. And this morning, he's stalking me, knocking my door, trying to sell me drugs. And no one, the guards are just a joke downstairs. Okay, so I need a good lawyer that's scared of shit. I'm going to sue this building. They're going to buy me a house in Malibu because they're allowing him to do this. And he's dealing drugs in a federal property in 507. He's got a prison record. He's anti-Semitic. He's white supremacist. He's crazy. And I went arrested. And I need help. Put his ass okay. away. Okay, Donna, I'm going to ask Steve to contact me privately. Yes, with sir. I'm of, I, I don't think I can be of any help. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Why not? Okay, that's not well, a most, question. Uh, there are lots of reasons. Yes, sir. That's, okay. that's not a question. I have a, I have a paper trail, and I have proof okay. of a lot of things, so evidence Donna, of things that he's I done. I will do my best to help find if there yeah. is an individual. And thank you for sharing that with You're us. You're welcome. I have evidence to put him away. Okay. okay. Thank you. I love you. I'm okay. Don't worry. I'm fine. I've been very brave. You say black, black Shabbat be courageous and brave. This girl's been brave. Shabbat sure Shalom. Shabbat. Shabbat. Have a good week. Kiss Risha for me and it's going to be okay. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Bye-bye. How's it going, Herman? I'm always hoping you stay on with me. Everything's oh, fine no. here. How are you doing? Okay. Okay. She's going to shut us off soon. Right, Hannah? When he shuts us off, she'll shut us off. <laughs> so what's going on with you, Herman? Same old, same old, Effie. Life, life is better since the pacemaker. Ah. I mean, it, 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 it literally, in my opinion, literally saved my life. Mm -hmm. Well, which makes modern me, medicine which makes can do me a lot of things. I'm sorry? Modern medicine can do a lot of things. Well, this pacemaker has allowed me to do a lot of things also. Mm -hmm. 
Believe it or not, I can now walk a longer distance than I could before. Well, yeah. And when I take, when I check my blood pressure every morning and I see that my heart rate is now in the 70s and 80s, it makes me feel great, believe me. <laughs> believe me, it makes me feel great. Yeah, I'm sure it does. Effie, who was the lady who was at the very end talking? I have no idea. Okay. She's, but she talks every week. Oh, yeah, I know lady, that. Lady but, Jones. But this was the biggest talk she's ever had. Mm -hmm. She was not a member of the university. I, I don't no, think. I don't know anything about it. Except what I see every Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, time to you go. Got big plan you got plans for the week? Sure. I'm I know you're going to visit Julie, but beside that. No. I'm going to go Chabad now. Well, that's your usual Saturday morning thing. I know that. Yeah. yeah. I know that. I think it's great that you do that. Yeah. I know. I don't think she remembers me or not, Effie, but give her a big yeah. kiss and hug for me and tell her I do miss her. Okay. Okay. She was. She was. She. She was part of our lives for so many years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I don't. I. I. I don't. I don't want to get said. Okay. You, you. You know how I feel. Yeah. Yep. Say hello Take to you. I'll see you next week. Shabbat shalom. Hello to B for me. We'll do. Take care. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom, my friend.